This is Twit. So give us an idea of how Dolby Atmos works, uh, what the concept is. I know that it's it goes beyond what we consider channel-based audio, you know, 5.1 channels, 7.1 channels. Uh, Dolby Atmos really does go beyond that, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It, it can map to any number of channels uh, in the decoding process. And because of the object-oriented approach, meaning each sound is tagged with information as to where it's supposed to come from, then in the decoding process, it will then recognize the number of channels, where the speakers are located, and kind of pan pot that image to be uh, located where it was tagged to supposed to come from. Mm -hmm. so, a, so for example, so for example a, a, a helicopter flying over uh, from front left to rear right or something like that, that sound is tagged with some metadata that tells the system where it's supposed to be and the system then plays it on whatever speaker it thinks it needs to in order to make that effect. Yeah, and not just whichever speaker, but whichever speaker combination that ah, you apply yes. the appropriate amplitude and phasing information to fool the ear into believing that the sound is in that particular location. Um, Got it. So when I heard it, yeah, I went in, I have to say, a, a bit skeptical, but they played it. They had a setup where they'd mounted some speakers overhead. And, you know, at that stage, I hadn't actually listened to it in a movie theater. So this is mm. the first time I was hearing the Atmos system. And they played it, and I thought, whoa, this actually works. But now we've got extra channels, and not only do we have, let's say, a 5.1 system, but now we've got speakers in the ceiling. Who, what percentage of people are actually going to do the combination? You know, if it's one <laughs> or the other. Now it's both. Um, right, right. I've I mean, always said the I've always said that the speakers on the ceiling have a very low spousal spousal acceptance factor. So very few people are actually going to install speakers in their ceiling, uh, unless you're an interior designer, and they won't yes. even let you have the walls these days. And they, <laughs> like, oh, well, I suppose we could put them on the ceiling. And there's already yeah. lights there. Um, right. Now this is both, but they then. Uh, understood my objections and said, okay, we know that a, a lot of people won't do this. Um, we have a system that can sort of virtualize the overhead information. And they proceeded to show us uh, prototypes of the 5.1 speakers, where the front left, front right, rear left, and rear right have each an additional upward firing drive unit. A drive unit with certain response characteristic, a uh, certain angle, and the idea is this will, because it's pointing up towards the ceiling, the sound will be reflected off the ceiling. And what you're mostly aware of is the image of that speaker coming from an equal distance above the ceiling as it is in reality below. So you're fooled into thinking you've now got four speakers way above you towards the front and to the rear, which are providing the extra information. And... I listened to the same demos over both the real speakers and these reflected image speakers. And I said, I actually prefer the reflected version. Really? Why is that? I think because uh, you're relying on auditory clues or cues to understand in the vertical direction where sound is coming from. You know, you've got the pinner um, around the ears, the... Mm -hmm effective response you hear from a sound source is modified by height. Uh, you, you get peaks and dips in the response uh, from reflections around the ear, and that gives you the clue for height. So if you're trying to virtualize it up above and you've got ceiling speakers too close to you, I think you hear both the real location of the speaker and the supposed location of where the sound is coming from. Mm. Um, now, this is conjecture on my part. You know, I can't <laughs> quote the research. <laughs> Probably you you can't back this up that. with mathematics and diagrams. <laughs> <laughs> um, but however, what I felt was just a more homogeneous sound field using the reflected process. And okay. for me, 
that was a no-brainer because rather than having both the 5.1 speakers and the ceiling speakers and having to wire it all up, now you've got a speaker, wherever you've got a speaker already, it's just an upward firing addition to that. 